1964, scientists discovered the fossil remains of an early human ancestor, Homo habilis. What was noted was the human-like dexterous ability of the hands, increased brain size and decreased tooth size in comparison to what we had known our earliest ancestor to be, the subject of this video, Australopithecus. Along with these traits, another human-like quality, a multitude of stone tools were also found at the site. These were some of the features used to measure how human remains were, along with bipedalism and the slowing down of growth into adulthood. These traits are thought to be shared between us and our ancestors going back at least two million years. The problem comes when we try to go back further than two million years. This is where the fossil record becomes murky at best. It is difficult to find a direct link between fossils found at this time and the genus Homo, to which we all belong. The human-like traits I mentioned evolved in this murky period. Whether separately or together, it's very difficult to tell. In the 1980s, after much more research, we also had Homo rudolfensis and Homo erectus coexisting around the same time as Habilis, around 1.65 to 2.1 million years ago. This research showed also that our evolution was not linear, but a tangled web of interbreeding and extinction. I may go further into this in a future video, but for now I want to focus on the earliest known species from which the genus Homo is a direct descendant, Australopithecus. Australopithecus had many subspecies some of which I will be mentioning due to the unique traits found out about them. That isn't to say these traits could not have existed in other species, it's just that we do not have the evidence of them in the fossil record. 3.2 million years ago, a juvenile member of the Australopithecus species unfortunately met her end. How this happened we are not sure of, but the conditions at the time allowed her bones to fossilise. In 1974, geologists and paleoanthropologists working at the site in Hadar, Ethiopia, uncovered her remains. They nicknamed her Lucy. At the time of Lucy's discovery, she was a shining star in the world of paleoanthropology. She was the oldest, most complete hominin skeleton ever discovered. She was evidence that bipedalism evolved before large modern human-sized brains evolved, and her discovery supported the scientific view that human evolution was a gradual process involving the appearance and survival of transitional forms over long periods of time. Lucy's species lived for over one million years. Since then, other genus of Australopithecus have been discovered and we can now date the earliest known of these, Australopithecus anamensis, to around 4.2 million years ago. Australopiths shared many traits with modern apes and humans, and were widespread throughout eastern and northern Africa by about 3.5 million years ago. The earliest evidence of fundamentally bipedal hominins is a 3.6 million year old fossil trackway in Laetoli, Tanzania, which bears a remarkable similarity to those of modern humans. The footprints have generally been classified as Australopith, as they were the only form of pre-human hominins known to have existed in that region and at that time. The brain of Australopithecus afarensis was about 35% of the size of a modern human brain. Most species of Australopithecus were diminutive and gracile, usually standing 1.2 to 1.4 meters tall. It is possible that they exhibited a considerable degree of sexual dimorphism, which would point to the males being larger than the females. 
from the findings of more modern populations in the species of Homo, males were on average 15% larger than the females, while in Australopithecus, males could be up to 50% larger than females by some estimates. However, the degree of sexual dimorphism is debated due to the fragmentary nature of Australopithecus remains. Whether Australopithecus was hairless is also debated. Many point to the bonobo, which is considered by some to be a more van species of chimpanzee, which in some cases have much less hair than their chimpanzee cousins. However, thermoregulatory models suggest that Australopiths were fully hair covered as they could not have stayed sufficiently warm without it, more like chimpanzees and unlike Homo sapiens. With the discovery of Lucy, we have evidence that bipedalism predated modern human brain size. We also have evidence that bipedalism predated even Australopithecus. In 2007, the genus Aurorin was discovered in Kenya. These fossils can be dated back to an astonishing 6.1 to 5.7 million years ago. What's more is that these fossils also showed signs that they had adapted to facilitate bipedalism. How well the species could walk is not certain, but we can safely assume that if these were the direct ancestors to Australopithecus, then by the time Australopithecus emerged, they would have been fully bipedal. Australopithecines have 32 teeth, like modern humans. Their molars were parallel, like those of great apes, and they had a slight pre-canine gap. Their canines were smaller, like modern humans, and with the teeth less interlocked than in previous hominins. In fact, in some Australopithecines, the canines are shaped more like incisors. While we have no direct evidence, it can be hypothesized that the reduction in tooth size may point to the ability to cook and soften up food. If so, this would have greatly contributed to brain development also, as cooking releases much more nutrients such as protein than eating food raw. Australopithecus are thought to have eaten mainly fruit, vegetables and tumours and perhaps small animals such as lizards and insects. The thickening of enamel in Australopiths may have been a response to eating more earth-originating foods such as tubers, nuts and cereal grains with gritty dirt and other small particulates that would wear away the enamel. A derivation of the species known as gracile Australopiths had larger incisors, which indicates tearing food was important. Perhaps eating scavenged meat? Nonetheless, the wearing patterns on the teeth support a largely herbivorous diet. This species occupied a wide range of environments. Some populations lived in savanna or sparse woodland. Others lived in denser forests besides lakes. Due to this, Australopithecus must have been very resourceful and adaptive as food variety would have differed greatly in these biomes. A trait that we could say that we have inherited. They would have also lived in groups like chimpanzees do today. This would be for protection and much more efficient food gathering. It would be in these groups that complex relationships would have sprouted. These relationships would also have developed the brain over millennia and could be the source of a lot of the emotions that we feel today. It was once thought that Australopithecus could not produce stone tools like its descendants Homo, but the discovery of Australopithecus garhi, associated with large mammoth bones bearing evidence of processing by stone tools showed this to not have been the case. Discovered in 1994, this was the oldest evidence of manufacturing at the time. This incredible revelation was then followed up by subsequent findings which proved that tool use 
among Australopithecus was very common. All of the Australopiths were extinct by about 1.4 million years ago, about 3 million years after they first appeared. Habitats may have vanished as a result of global climate cooling, or the Australopiths may have been pressed into extinction by the growing populations of early hominins. In a way, they did not really become extinct. Some branches evolved into new hominin species such as Habilis, and it may have been those species that drove the then remaining archaic Australopiths to extinction due to competition for food and territory. You could say it was their own success that ultimately ended the species, but their success is also why their genes live on in all of us today.